If you're reluctant to publish your audiobooks through Audiobook Creation Exchange, ACX, due to some of their hangups and issues, or you're looking to expand your reach with audiobooks, then let's discuss publishing your audiobooks on Amazon and other various platforms for audiobook distribution. That way you reach more listeners and increase your author platform exponentially. Stay tuned to today's podcast. Of course, we're going to jump right into things, and over the past month, I've been sharing, I mean, just gushing about my recent experience working with Dibley Create. Believe it or not, they're not just sponsors of this podcast. They're my go-to for all things writing now. I went from grinding it out in Microsoft Word or using shared cloud-based systems like Google Docs, but they've all been missing one element or another. For instance, I've le leaned a lot on generative AI for assisting with grammar checking, rewriting, or even outlining my work and even more things. Dibley Create Ah, they're a little different. Dibley Create is my preferred cloud-based word processing software that has AI integration. When I'm ready to have another person contribute, whether they're proofreading or editing or even collaborating, Dibley Create has exactly what I need. For a limited time, sign up for a seven-day free trial to the Dibley Create Pro, Pro Plan, easy for me to say, when you visit my affiliate link at dailylinks.com slash Dibley Create. Dibley Create, it's where innovation thrives. Okay, folks, I have to tell you, like before we do jump into things, it's still a sponsored spot. You're like, come on, let's get to the stuff. Um, I just wrapped up a seven day book writing challenge using Dibley Create on my phone. And I'm ecstatic to launch this video tomorrow on my main channel. So please make sure you're staying tuned to something like that because it is just, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Uh, but yeah, Dibley Create has been fantastic and they were largely responsible for a lot of the success that I've had in doing the seven day book writing challenge. Sorry, that's a little bit of a spoiler, but uh, all right, well, let's go ahead and get into audiobooks. If you plan to publish beyond <clears throat> ACX, also known as Audiobook Creation Exchange, you gotta remember a few things to keep in mind. You must, first of all, use the non-exclusive option. So this means that you're gonna take a cut and your royalties. So there's a lot of people out there that don't want to do that. They're like, oh, but I'm gonna lose about 15% of my royalty. Yes, if you're not exclusive with ACX, it is a 25% royalty. It's, it's, it's small, it's not much. But a lot of people make the argument, well, oh, let me just stay exclusive because I get 40% royalty and it's got the lion's share of listeners through Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Good argument. The problem is, I mean, not for everybody. It's not something that is going to work out. I mean, for instance, KDP Select is not for everyone. That is not going to be an avenue that's worth pursuing, especially if you're looking to reach out and get out more read, uh, get more readers. So if for some reason on ACX, you're hearing a lot of people flexing their paydays or they're sharing their you know phenomenal success just using ACX strictly, but you're not seeing it, then we need to have a chat. We need to talk. This is the episode for you. Because yeah, you only get those three avenues. And not to mention Apple, Apple distribution through ACX is not a preferred partner. In fact, they don't give the same royalty that they do say for instance with find away voices or other partners, preferred partners of Apple. So that's something to kind of bear in mind is, yeah, you know, you'll be able to get those three avenues, but it has its limitations. Not to mention the fact that ACX puts a price on your book without you, without your say so. That's the part that sucks. Now I'm not gonna get on a rant like I did last week. We're just gonna stay on track this week. But you all will know that I'm not too happy when it comes to ACX and some of their predatory practices. So, um. One thing I will say that ACX gets right is their audiobook specs. Their specifications are on point. It is literally the gold standard of this business. If you can get your audiobook to where it's dialed into the specs for ACX, you will be fine on every other platform. Now, here's the cool and good news. Let's say you just want to skip ACX and you don't want to deal with them and you don't want to do their specs, that's totally fine. I would still recommend you use your specifications. It's very stringent and what comes out is gonna be a far superior product than if you were to say, for instance, open up your iPhone and start recording your audiobook and then distribute it as such. Eh, that's not a good look. I would recommend using ACX's Audio Lab and the Audio Lab is 100% free. You could just go ahead and Google it up. I didn't put it inside the show notes. I think you guys and gals can kind of figure that one out. 
But um, use that Audio Lab. It's really, really helpful. I know my sound engineer here at the local studio had used it and loved it. Prior to it, he was having issues and he was going to drive his head through one of his sound booths after so many times of me bouncing it back to him. And then when I handed him the Audio Lab with ACX, boom, it was, it was working really, really well using that. Um, just keep in mind here, folks, you cannot use non-exclusive as an option for royalty share deals. So if you've already done a 50-50 royalty split over on ACX, it's not possible. You're just going to be stuck on that platform. It's just the reality. If you want to get exclusive with a 50-50 royalty split, you must buy out your agreement with the royalty share narrator. Eh, it's, it's not something that's great. I've never been a big fan of, you know, the whole royalty share thing, but I do know that it's a necessary evil for a lot of folks out there, and you might be one of those as well. But uh, just fair warning, chances are very likely you're going to have to pay the per finished hour rate of that narrator. And in some instances, if that audiobook has been on the market for a while and it has been performing really well, chances are super likely that narrator is going to gouge that that PFH, that per finished hour, because they know what they stand to lose by breaking that agreement here with you. And keep in mind too, if you do break that agreement, you have to delist that audiobook. You keep the audiobook rights, but in the same instance, you have to upload it again, all right? And it starts out brand new. You won't have any of the reviews. It sucks. So again, I don't recommend royalty share unless you absolutely have to. So let's talk about five avenues to consider beyond ACX, because I can sit here and do a whole punch down video on ACX, which I have done in the past. Today, it's not about ACX so much as it is the other platforms for you to consider. And I've been one of the biggest supporters and the people that are, have been trumpeting like find away voices every time that I can get. They're an Ohio-based company that actually got acquired by Spotify. I think it's already been a couple of years now at this point. And as Spotify had picked up the entire parent company of Findaway, and they started to take control of Findaway Voices. They moved the entire staff for Findaway Voices to complete remote work, which is kind of cool. I think it is. Um, and they've done a few other options, including getting the Spotify distribution for audiobooks. Now, more recently, um, they had explained that even though there is an 80% royalty that you're going to get through Find Away Voices, if you are getting any sales on Spotify, it is 100% of the royalties and the net profits coming through Spotify. Now, a side note, Spotify for per sale, you're going to get 50%. Okay, I know that's, that's a lot of like, I'm saying 80% and 50%, 80% of net profits on any of the avenues that are going through Find Away Voices, but Spotify. There is a little bit of preferential treatment when it comes to Spotify for obvious reasons. And over, I'd say about a week or two ago, they just announced that premium subscribers for Spotify can actually start streaming your audiobooks. Now, it is an all or nothing thing. So if you choose Spotify, you will have the a la carte option as well as the pool based option. So meaning that you're going to be paid from a pool of the subscribers. I've heard some horror stories when it comes to musicians and how they have seen pretty much a small amount of profits through Spotify's you know, system. I reached out to Find Away Voices for comment about it, which I will, of course, address this in my news segment later on today. Um, all that to say this, that it's it's a little bit on shaky ground, in my opinion, when it comes to the whole pool-based system. So I can't weigh in on that one way or the other, but I would really love it if Find Away Voices did make the option to choose either or or both. That's, that's totally fine with me. So again, 80% folks for anything else outside of Spotify, there are literally like over 40 different platforms that Find Away Voices hits. In fact, there is a lot of companies that lean on Find Away for that distribution because it is so incredible. And they hit, you ready for this? One of my favorite areas, libraries. I'm a big library nerd. I totally believe that my books should be in the library because that's where I go. That's where I live. That's where I enjoy my content. I get a lot of stuff there. And it's not just going to Amazon. You know, I do go a lot to libraries. So what I would recommend, folks, is with each one of these, these avenues, as well as Find Away Voices, make sure that you're reading the agreement 
that you sign on for because there's going to be a more, bit more clarification when it comes to some of these percentages because I could spend an entire podcast just talking about find away voices, different avenues and each of the percentages that you are given. You do not have to use all of their 40 plus retailers and libraries. So that means if for some reason you're like, Dale, I hate Spotify. It's terrible. I don't want to use that one, but I want to hit libraries. Totally fine. You can do that. Let's say, for instance, you want to skip ACX, but you still want Amazon and Audible as well as Apple. You can go through Find Away Voices. Side note here, Apple considers Find Away Voices a preferred retailer, a preferred partner. So they actually give them a 45% royalty for each one of those sales. Now, keep in mind, you're going to get 80% of that when it comes through. But Find Away Voices, fantastic platform. All right, another one that you can take a look at, and this is one that I've been really digging into lately. Uh, it was about a few years ago I stumbled over them. Actually, it's been quite a few years, probably 2018 when I first discovered them. And the uh, platform is called Publish Drive. Now, before you start tuning out here, if you've heard of Publish Drive before, you're probably going, eh, no, don't think so. It is not a platform that you're free to upload content, all right? It's not free distribution. But the nice thing is there's no revenue share. So this means you get 100% royalty for each one of your sales, 100% of the net profits that come in, that is. So they are a subscription-based site, meaning that in order to distribute your audiobooks through Publish Drive, you have to pay a monthly subscription fee. Now, last I checked, it was about 15 bucks. I probably should have put this one down in my notes, but it just completely slipped my mind. It varies upon how many audiobooks you want to distribute through them. Now, it will say two titles or 10 titles or something like that. What it's saying is the different iterations. So this means that if you want to publish your ebook, your print book, and your audiobook through Publish Drive, that's three titles technically according to them. So that's going to increase. For me, I actually picked up a lifetime deal through AppSumo where I could actually distribute audiobooks and it was like 97 bucks or something like that. And I ended up getting 97 slots and I don't have to pay a dime for these from this point on. Unfortunately, I don't think that AppSumo deal is around anymore. Uh, so I happened to luck out on that one. So it looks like I'll definitely be distributing audiobooks through Publish Drive for sure because I get 100% of the net profits coming in. Now, you're probably saying net profits. You keep saying this here, Dale. You keep saying this. Well, because Find Away Voices and Publish Drive act as middlemen they're gonna take a percentage of the cuts that are coming in. Now, when they hit those avenues, those specific avenues, let's say Apple as a, for instance, Apple's gonna pay you 45% of each one of the sales of your audiobooks. It comes through Find Away Voices and they take 20% of that net profit. With Publish Drive, it does not do that. Now, I don't know if they have direct line to Apple. I don't think they do. They actually do lean on find a way for distribution. And in total, they have eight avenues that reach out to thousands of other different retailers. And the part that I really like the best about them is they actually have distribution to China. That right there is big to me. I can reach more readers. Now, how many people in China are going to pick up my book remains to be seen, but having it available at least gives my readers options. Okay, let's transition over to another one that maybe you haven't thought of. In fact, you probably just thought about them as an ebook distribution platform. It's Kobo Writing Life. This is one that I really just didn't explore until like the last year, and I am going full on bullish on these guys. They are wonderful, a fantastic platform. Um, they were founded by a good friend of mine, Mark Leslie Lefebvre. Mark is just a genius when it comes to self-publishing, but at any rate, they actually do distribute audiobooks. So this means if you happen to use Findaway Voices, you would want to make sure that you deselect Kobo and you deselect Overdrive because those two avenues you can hit through Kobo Writing Life. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's easy for me to say. 45% royalty for anything that is $2.99 and up. That's right. You get to price your book. Like Find Away Voices, you get to price your book, ACX. No, you don't get to price your book. They price it for you. Now, if you happen to want to price an audiobook below $2.99, it'll be 35%. A little bit of a tip here. 
just price your book at $2.99 or higher. Even if you feel like it's shorter, it's only three bucks. I don't think that's going to decrease your sales by at all. If you're like, ah, I really want to have my audiobook at 99 cents, but it's not allowing me to do that. Just, just do the 2.99, get that 10% more. And here's the cool thing, 45%. Um, yeah, let's look at ACX again, 40%. Versus 45%. I get 5% more and I get to choose how much? Yeah, that would be great. Now, Overdrive. The reason why I bring up Overdrive is that is the library distribution that I really like to have. In fact, I actually use Overdrive's app called Libby. And Libby is great for doing um, ebooks as well as audiobooks. And I've done it a number of times through them. It's a mobile app. Really, really love it. So getting overdrive distribution is huge. Now, bear in mind, you could still hit those two avenues through Find Away Voices. But remember, Find Away Voices is going to take 20% of your cuts. You might as well cut out the middleman, go right to the source. And that's the nice thing about Find Away is that they allow you to deselect distribution. ACX, no, it's all or nothing. It's all or nothing. Now, speaking of all or nothing, this one was a, this next one, it was kind of surprising. I actually did a little bit of research before I got into the podcast today for obvious reasons, because things change on a regular basis. I was always led to believe this next platform was an all or nothing type situation, but I think it actually has changed more recently. And the platform's called Authors Republic. They have over 50 different platforms divided into three categories that you can select based on your needs. Now, the 50 different platforms are put into these three platforms, but the distribution and how they get them, uh, a large part of it goes through Findaway. You can see how big Findaway Voices is because people land on them, but they break out their categories into three. Now you can deselect or select any of those three, but if there's a particular avenue that is underneath a category that you would like to remove from that, Unfortunately, that is just not possible. So their first category is Amazon Audible. Okay, great. So that means if I want to do ACX and Authors Republic, I can just deselect Amazon Audible through Authors Republic and I'm set. They have a second category called Retail Distributors and a third one that's called Music Channel Distributors, which is fairly interesting. It's probably tapping into YouTube music. I'm just assuming on this one. But uh, they used to have this all or nothing type philosophy. Now, at least they have different categories you can select and deselect. This has gotten my attention and it definitely, I'm gonna do a little bit more deep diving into this for my next audiobook publishing uh, publication because um, if I can deselect Amazon Audible and the retail distributors, but hit music channel distributors, I'm probably gonna go ahead and use them. The reason why I'm gonna skip retail distributors is I'm sure a lot of those avenues are handled by Findaway. And that's just redundant and I don't wanna have my audiobook being published twice to a certain area. And I recommend that when you do plan out your audiobook publishing that you really think about where you're going and really pay attention to those things. Now, Authors Republic offers 70% of net profits, about 10% less than Findaway. Now, keep in mind, if they're going through Findaway, there's going to be another cut that's being removed from that cut. So that kind of gets a little bit messy. It's one of the reasons why I have not used Authors Republic, but now that they have the option to deselect three different categories of any of those, it definitely gives me pause. It makes me think about things. Now, this is another avenue that I'm definitely going all in on in 2024, and it's direct sales, direct sales. You can have it fulfilled through a number of places. I think PayHip does one of them. Uh, the one I want to mention is Book Funnel. Now, Book Funnel typically has been used for like ARCs and uh, doing any type of newsletter swaps, things like that. If you want to do audiobook distribution through them, it's about roughly $10 per month. You got to read some of the fine print to figure out what that's going to entail. Because I do know on some of the more basic plans, if you have a short audiobook, they're fine with the distribution. But when you start to get something a little bit heavier, as far as the data goes, they're probably going to get you to pay more per month. I didn't dig too far into that just yet, but the fact that I can do direct sales instead of sending someone over to Amazon or Audible, I can bring them directly over to me, only have to pay, let's say 10 bucks per month, and I get 100% of the royalty minus any of the payment processor fees. So really, really cool. I have covered a lot of these things really, really fast. It's like drinking from a fire hose here, folks, but let's go ahead and put it all together. I'm gonna hit places like ACX, Find Away Voices, Kobo Writing Life, since I got Kobo and Overdrive there, Publish Drive, 
and then book funnel for direct sales. Possibly, I mean, possibly I'll remove ACX because I've just been so against them as of late and until they can kind of prove to me that they're just not out to just use me and throw me out and discard me. Eh. So the book funnel <coughs> avenue is one of those avenues I definitely want to look into uh, and really try to it, it suggest the same for you because the more independent that you can get yourself, the better. Because you never know with a platform like ACX if they're going to go ahead and terminate your account or if any other platform goes belly up for whatever reason. You at least have with direct sales, you have a direct conversation with your listeners. Now, I want to give you a couple honorable mentions. I've mentioned them in the past over here on this podcast. Lantern Audio, formerly known as Listen Up Audio. Audiobooks Unleashed, uh, keep in mind with that platform, they actually have a vetting process, so you actually have to apply to use their, their platform. And then the other one's called Shin Shi, that's spelled X-I-N-X-I-I. -I -I. Definitely look into that one. I played with them for a minute or two, but haven't really seen any particular results, but that's on me and not on Shin Shi. All right, well, just a quick shout out here, folks, to my sponsors, Dibley Create. Get free or premium access when you use my affiliate link at dailinks.com slash dibleycreate. Here are my final thoughts here, folks. Authors who expand their reach beyond Amazon and Audible will reach more potential readers. That's the most important thing. If you're after the buck and you're after the almighty dollar and you just want to go all in, you say, Amazon, Audible, that's it, Dale. I don't care about any other avenues. Kudos to you. But I just implore you that if, if you just could just entertain the fact of trying to reach more readers. You don't have to go with all those avenues I've mentioned. You don't have to do the same exact thing that I've done. But chances are very likely that you could potentially be making more sales by expanding beyond just audiobook creation exchange. It's, it's not your position to have to agree with everything that I see. If you love audiobook creation exchange, go ahead and knock yourself out. But just know, there's some warning signs out there. Audiblegate.com. Go take a look. They tell you exactly what's going on. Brandon Sanderson says, I'm avoiding Amazon and Audible. I'm going straight over to Spotify. So that's something to kind of think about. Hey, next week, I am really geeked up. One of my self-publishing heroes, Honoré Quarter, is actually going to be spending some time with me. We're going to be talking about writer's block. This indie author has the cure for you. If you've ever had writer's block, believe it or not, I didn't realize I had writer's block. I just thought it was just procrastination. I usually just say, oh, I'm going to do my book till later. And uh, apparently that's block. It's called a time block. But uh, she did such a great book and just launched it. I think today was when she launched it. It was supposed to be officially launched next Monday when we'll be going live. So join me then. And we're actually going to pick up this conversation about making more money publishing audiobooks in the week after next. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I'll see you next week.